guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today because today we are going to be making an octopus. I've never made one before, but I've been in a weird mood to do more water creatures lately, so I thought it'd be a fun kind of sewing project because there really won't be any clay work involved. Anyways, let's get started. Okay, so like 99.9% .9 of this project is just sewing, but I do have a few hard pieces that I need to make for our octopus. I need to make a pair of eyes. These are going to be made out of resin, and then we're going to be making a beak. So for making the eyes, you'll need a mold for this. I just have a basic little dome mold that has a bunch of little half circles. Now you'll notice in the mold that I already have them partially filled. This resin is already cured. So what I'm going to do is to make the pupil very simple, I just cut some pieces of felt. I didn't have colored paper, otherwise I would have just used that. But I cut some felt and I put down a tiny bit of resin onto the surface of the resin that's already cured. And I just stuck that into place. I made sure that the pupils were centered in the very middle of the dome and then I let that dry. If you don't want to wait for the resin to cure again, which usually takes about 24 hours, you could just use a glue for it. But I was mixing up resin for another project at the time, and since I already had it, I figured I'd just use it. So I let that cure, and then I'm going to take my paints, and we're going to start painting the details of the eye. Now for the main details, I want them to be a bit metallic, so I have this gold leaf paint, and I'm going to start painting some details onto the eyes with it. I actually picked this up so I could sign my paintings with it. So I'm just going to be painting around the pupil really carefully, and then I'm going to add a few polka dots of it. After that, I used a little bit of acrylic white to add a few different colored polka dots. I let all of my paint completely dry and then I mixed up some resin and I added some orange paint to it. And then I'm just going to pour this into the rest of the mold. So I'm going to fill the molds up the rest of the way. Now, like I said, these are going to have to cure for about 24 to 48 hours, but we have plenty of other things to do right now, so that's no problem. So I'm going to set these off to the side to cure and we're going to work on the beak. Now some people may not know that octopus actually have a beak, and that's how they eat things. So it kind of looks like a little tiny parrot beak, right in the very middle underneath them. Now for making the beak, I'm going to be using Instamorph. And I want certain pieces to be colored, but I don't want to have to deal with painting it and resining over it to protect it. So what we're going to do is while we're melting down our Instamorph, we're going to add a tiny bit of paint to it and blend it in. So I know that I want the beak to be black, so I'm going to be blending in black paint into some of my Instamorph for that. And then I know some of the skin around the beak is going to show, so I'm going to be adding kind of like a pinky color to that. So I'm going to blend my colors into my Instamorph and get everything laid out. And then once we have that done, we can remelt them and start shaping them. And that's one thing that I really like about Instamorph is you can just remelt it as many times as you need to. So I'm going to start off with shaping the beak. We're going to need a top and a bottom, and I want to have the beak slightly open. So these are going to be separate pieces. And one of them is going to be slightly larger, and that one's going to be the top. Then I'm going to take my pink Instamorph and we're going to remelt that as well. So I'm going to lay that out and then we can take the beak pieces that we made and push them into the surface of our pink Instamorph. Lastly, I need a lip going all the way around this so that I have something to glue onto when I add this to the fabric. So for this, I'm just going to use regular Instamorph. I'm not going to add any color or anything because you're not going to see it. And I'm just going to melt it down and create a little disc, and I'm going to set my beak on top of it. I'm going to make sure to shape it and have it rounded off, and then we just need to let that finish drying. Okay, now we can start on the sewing. So I'm going to show you guys my pattern real quick, and then we can move on to getting all the pieces put together. So for the legs of the octopus, you can have them honestly whatever shape you want, just kind of keep them roughly the same thickness. And then I did four different patterns for this, that way each side of the octopus I could mirror. And then for the under portion of the octopus, I just kind of have a round piece with the edges a little bit squared off where we're going to connect the legs. And then I have a pattern piece to make the main body of the octopus, or kind of the head portion, and this is kind of roughly shaped like a leaf. Lastly, we have a piece of fabric to glue the eyes to, and then we also have little circles to make eyelids. So these are the fabric pieces that you're going to need for the under portion of the octopus. You're going to need all the bottom portions of the tentacles, and then you're going to need the very middle. Now these I'm going to end up dyeing, so they will look different when we start sewing them. 
and then you're going to need the top portion of your tentacles. The only thing different with these and the bottom portion is I added about roughly an inch or two to the very end where we connect it to the body and then I tapered it a little bit. And this is going to make the body kind of lift up a bit instead of taking the shape of like a pancake or something. And then the pieces for the head of the octopus, you're going to need four of these. So for all the fabric pieces, I ended up dyeing them a little bit to kind of mute them and to add a bit more color to them here and there because they just didn't look natural enough. So I did that off camera. I think I did it in a vlog, so if you uh, dug around my vlogs, you could probably see me messing around with this. But I did that. I let everything dry. And we're basically going to start sewing everything now. So the first bit of sewing that we're going to do is we're going to sew the tentacles. So I'm going to find the top and bottom for each tentacle and I'm going to pin them together and then I'm going to sew around the sides of them with my sewing machine. After we get them all sewn, I'm going to take my scissors and we're going to cut off all the excess fabric around them. This will help them flip right side out and just have a better shape. Especially with the tentacles that have more of a curve, it'll make sure that they don't bunch up. So I'm going to get that done. I'm then going to flip them right side out and then I can stuff them. Now I wasn't quite sure at first if I wanted to paint on the suction cups before or after putting everything together, but I figured it'd be easier to handle one tentacle at a time than to handle the whole octopus while trying to add paint to it. So what I'm doing right now is I'm taking 3D fabric paint and I'm putting little dots to kind of emphasize where the suction cups would be. So I'm going to do this to all eight of the tentacles and then I'm going to set these aside to dry. While those are drying, we're going to get the rest of the sewing done for the body. So the body piece, again, has four different pieces. So we're going to take these, pin them together, and sew them all together, kind of creating a weird shaped ball. Once we have our poor excuse for a ball done, we're then going to flip it right side out and stuff it. Now if you've ever seen an octopus, the body of the octopus is very wrinkly, so I'm going to sew in some wrinkles. Now it is best to do this before we have the octopus completely put together, because we can easily hide the tied off portions of our thread inside of the body. So basically, I figure out where I want the wrinkle to start, I put my needle inside of the ball of the octopus's body, and then I pull it out, and then we can just pinch the fabric and sew back and forth to kind of separate the fabric. Then we can just go back into the body of the octopus and tie it off. And with this, you can make it as wrinkly as you want. Now we're going to take the under portion of the octopus. This is the very round portion that's going to connect all the tentacles underneath. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the beak that we made earlier with Instamorph and we're going to figure out the size that we need to cut a hole for it. So we're going to draw out on the back how large the hole needs to be and then we can cut it out. Then we're just going to take some fabric glue and go around the base of the beak. So that white portion that is going to end up being hidden, we're going to add our glue there. Then we can take the fabric piece and we can lay it over and push it in and make sure that there's no holes or gaps or anything like that. This will obviously have to dry for a little bit. Okay, so the eyes are going to be a little bit complicated, but they're not too, too bad. So obviously our resined eyes are cured. I pop them out of the mold and we're going to start putting them together on the fabric body. So the first thing that I did was I added a little bit of glue down the middle back portion of those little circles that we cut. These are the eyelids. So I'm adding some glue right in the middle and then I'm folding them in half and letting them dry. Then I'm taking a little bit of scrap fabric and I'm gluing the resin eyes to this fabric. That way we have a surface to work with. I'm going to let the glue dry for a little bit and then I'm going to start sewing our eyelids into place. So I'm just going to sew two of them together at the very corner and then sew it to the backing fabric. I'm going to do this to both sides and then I'm going to take more fabric glue and I'm going to glue down the eyelids. That way the eyes stay open. Next, we're going to take the fabric that we want to glue the eyes onto. So I have these little patterns set up and I've drawn out a circle. Basically, I took the resin eyes and I traced onto the fabric and I'm going to cut this hole out. Then I'm going to take my fabric glue and I'm going to go around the edges of that hole. We're then going to flip this over and push our eye through that hole and make sure to press our fabric down to get a nice good seam. Obviously, there's a lot of glue involved with making the eyes, so I'm going to let these dry. 
Now at this point we have all the pieces for the octopus ready. We have all the tentacles, the belly basically, the body of the octopus, basically everything is ready and we're going to start putting it together. So I'm going to start with the under portion, the very round part that has the beak, and we're going to sew all of our tentacles in place on this. So I laid them out where I wanted all the tentacles to be connected to the body, and I just started adding them one at a time. Next, I'm going to flip this over, and then the top portion of the tentacles have all that extra fabric that we added, and we're going to start sewing these together. So I'm just going to go all the way around and sew all of these little flaps together. Now I'm going to take the body of the octopus and I'm going to add it to the tentacles. So that opening we have at the very top, we're just going to sew and connect the body of the octopus at the very top, just going all the way around. Now right before you finish sewing this up, if you want to add any excess stuffing, make sure to do that and then you can close everything up. Lastly, we're going to add the eyes to the body. Now you'll want these kind of far apart and just kind of figure out where you want them and then we're going to start sewing them into place. So I'm just sewing around the base of the eye. I'm taking my time because you want to make sure that both eyes are sewn into place evenly. You don't want one to be crooked or not. Also, I stuffed the backing of these to make them pop out a bit too. And that's how I made an octopus. I had so much fun with this project. I'm going to have him along with a bunch of other creatures in my Etsy shop. So if you guys want to buy anything, check the links down below for that. Now I am going to be saving the pattern that I used to make this. So whenever I start adding patterns to my Etsy shop, this is going to be one of them. I still am trying to figure out all the like technical stuff about it, but I have the patterns that I want to use picked out already, and this is going to be one of them. So I think I'm going to have about three or four when I first start doing my patterns, so I'll let you guys know, probably in a vlog or some kind of post, if I do have them released anytime soon. But I still need to figure out how to actually sell them, and I gotta refine them, so they're currently just drawn on paper and stuff. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!